Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Quarantine Series, the Quarantine Film Series. We're back at it again. I'm your host, Kabir Segal, coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia, where we're still voting down here. All right. I want to say hi to my mom and dad. Thanks for watching downstairs, and thanks to all of you for watching around the world. Very exciting. The whole international audience that likes to tune in. Quarantine Series is all about putting the spotlight on creative individuals. These are the filmmakers and musicians the authors that create the stories and the music that entertain us and provoke us even uh, throughout these difficult times. So if you can, if you can, please support the projects you learn about on this broadcast, read the books, stream the, stream the movies. And uh, I think it's important to think local. So if you can help those in your community, the local film festival or the local bookshop, let's be there for each other. Um, I think artists and audiences, we need each other during this difficult time of international tumult. And then, all right. So, if um, you have any questions, I don't have to ask all the questions. But if you have some questions, drop a question in the comment field. No matter if you're watching live or if you're watching on the rebroadcast, so we will try to opine, opine to your questions, and uh, let us know where you're watching from. We got New York in the house. We got SoCal in the house. We have Atlanta in the house. Let us know where you're watching from. Drop a comment. Let us know city, state, county, area code. I don't need exact addresses. That's a little creepy. So just um, cities would be cool. I'm, I always enjoy learning about all the provinces in the world, especially. So now for the best part of the show, we get to meet the remarkable artist. Here we are, right on cue. He's a terrific filmmaker. Um, he's very capable with cameras. He's an award-winning camera operator, cinematographer, nominated for the Society of Camera Operators, Camera Operator of the Year. See what I mean? And he worked on incredible pictures that we all heard about, like A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I can't say that without thinking about singing it. And uh, his debut feature, which we'll talk about uh, at length, Chez La Bie, premiered at the International uh, Film Festival in Rotterdam. So please welcome to the quarantine series, the maestro himself, Sam Ellison. Welcome. Happy to, happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. So uh, tell me first, Sam, how has the quarantine um, impacted you? How has it impacted some of your projects? Oh, man. Um, you know, I think for everybody in the industry right now, it's been it's been sort of an incredibly uh, unpredictable year. And actually, when when the whole thing started, when when um, uh, COVID first burst onto the scene, as it were, I was in Italy um, shooting a, a little independent feature um, down in Calabria in the south. And so I was really um, one of the first, or we were one of the first productions to be affected by this as we were sort of um, very quickly kicked out of the country and, and sort of forced to come scrambling back to the US. Um, and then sort of I, I experienced this bizarre week where I had already seen the shutdowns occur in Europe. Um, and then I was just sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop in the US. And so, you know, since March, I was really um, not doing not doing a whole lot. You know, the, all the the film productions that I had been slated to take part in were all uh, canceled or postponed. And I only really got back to work um, in September. So it was a it was a it was a long period of sort of waiting to see how things were gonna were gonna shake out. And yeah, I'm currently uh, shooting a show for Apple TV. Um, that I can't I can't talk all that much about, but we we are sort of up and going again in a very um, strange new way. That I think you know if anybody watching is part of the the game, they will um, understand. Wow, that's I like I'm that at. in the game. Uh, speaking in yeah. code, I like it. Um, <laughs> so, t tell me, um, um, what the typical day is like for you in quarantine? Do you have a routine? Do you wake up at the same time? You take your daily vitamins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I also have a, a very young daughter, you know, so I'm, I I had that uh, um, distraction, very very positive distraction throughout. So was, my my routine was mostly oriented around uh, taking care of her and and um, just sort of being there all the time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, now that now that I'm that I'm back on set. Uh, things are a little different, and and you know the, the biggest difference between the way things are operating now and how they were before is that you know uh, uh, 
from my on my in my job um shooting the shots operating the camera i'm entirely using remotes at this point so i'm not even i'm not even in the room most of the time <laughs> with the actors during performances i'm on a i'm on a i'm on you know wheels connected to a a remote head and i'm um somewhere else so it's a really sort of bizarre way to work and also but like you know i have i have a i have this sort of balance in my career between this what i do for for a living which is you know shooting um operating these these sort of bigger budget um productions and then my my documentary work um which is has been entirely on hold because i just i, I just don't know how to um get out there and sort of like be in the world the way i would normally uh be under these circumstances and so i'm, I'm in be i'm in between projects anyway you know i finished this the film yeah. that you that you mentioned Shishé La Vie, um last year and so I'm, I'm waiting for the right time to to start the next one i hear you all the COVID protocols make it difficult to film certainly um in this period but let's talk about the um your your uh documentary uh Shishé La Vie. let's why did you want to make this um project tell us a little bit about the story for those i think most of us who haven't seen it yet that i think want to yeah i mean it hasn't been released widely yet it's coming out on um itunes and amazon in december so next month um but yeah it's a it's a it's a documentary that follows the story of these two friends from haiti who through a, a sort of long tumultuous route end up arriving at the u.s border in tijuana in tijuana mexico um just before the election of donald trump and sort of they have this idea that they will be able to uh, you know request asylum and start that whole process and they have sort of a vision of the the life in the US that they that they plan to lead and then right as they arrive at the finish line which is you know the 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 border crossing in Tijuana um the the door slams in their face and it becomes clear that there there's sort of no um possibility of um moving forward and so the film kind of begins at that point at the point where they have arrived in in TJ and they're sort of staring at the wall and and trying to come to grips with what happens next. Um, and without giving away too much, it's they they um, are forced to separate, and they they end up in very different um, situations. It's sort of like the story of two two friends who were brought together by this, you know, really unpredictable, crazy migration route, and have no one else to depend on but each other, and then. Uh, it's about how they they reconcile with their separation. So it's, yeah, I'm I'm like much more interested in in stories about individuals and and um you know these like smaller relationships that have a have that are that are uh you know set against larger um political issues and and I think it's sort of personally for me I'm I'm th these are the kinds of films that I would rather watch is sort of movies that are that are smaller and more more intimate that speak to the sort of the bigger societal picture as opposed to trying to do it the other way around. Yeah. How did the story change in the edit uh, versus what you thought it would be going into it? Well, so it's the the two main characters are, are these guys, Robbins and James, who are who are both um, in their mid twenties and 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 they, you know, have have spent all this time together sort of imagining and and building um the the future that they see in florida they're both gonna they both have family in miami and so they're imagining getting to florida one day um, but the big uh crisis that that unfolds in the middle of the film is that one of the two guys james um is is detained is basically given a chance to cross the border but you know knowing that he will enter the the whole um machinery of the ice detention system while he while he makes his case for asylum and so he disappears and and the the hardest part of that for us as filmmakers is that we had no idea and no advance warning that he was planning to do that it's sort of like we were we were following the two of them consistently um for a few months and then uh one day we we got a call from robin saying that james left and and then you know we didn't hear from him for two months and we were then, then we started to get uh collect calls from 
prisons all over the US and it was really hard to tell what was going on with him. And like, we, we were scrambling to try to figure out if we could get a lawyer to go see him or if we could go see him personally. But, um, you know, it's the, the, the system makes it almost impossible to do that. And so eventually he, he popped out on the other side after being deported back to Haiti. Um, and so we were able to catch up with him again, but it was sort of like the, the editing of the thing or like the shape of the film, um, as a whole was really unknowable for us at the beginning. And, and it only, um, became clear as all of these, uh, things happened to our protagonists, you know, which is, which is fairly mm -hmm. normal, I think for, for an observ observational, um, documentary film. But uh, in this case, it was just sort of like a like a a real um, whiplash uh, process for us. Yeah, we really I hear didn't you. Know, we didn't know if we were going to get him back at all. We didn't know if we would if we would be re reunited. Yeah, what's well, been the uh, initial feedback, and um, how do you hope this film affects, um, I guess, the broader understanding of the borderlands in this region of the world? Yeah, it's you know it's really interesting because I think the the film is. Um, speaking to so many different sort of subsections of um, the the sort of migration crisis at the border. And I think one of the most important things about it is that it reveals that this is not such a, it's th this place, the, the, the US-Mexico border and specifically Tijuana is not a binary situation. It's not like just Central Americans that are trying to come into the US. It's like also, all these people from all these other parts of the world that are sort of washed ashore there and then um, sort of uh, left to, to fend for themselves. And, and then also, we don't really get into this in the film, but all these people from the US who are being you know, sent back across. Um, and so I, I think the, the people who have related to this film or been most excited by this film are people either in Mexico who like don't often see this part of their, their country um, depicted in this way, which is sort of like a lot more uh, regular and like desensationalized. It's not, a, it's not, you know, Tijuana is not necessarily a like nightmarish place. It's a place that, where all these forces are, are in action, but, but there's also all these sort of um, regular folks uh, trying to make regular lives out of, out of this um, situation and so and and then also it's you know there there have not been very many films that focus on uh, Caribbean people, West Indian people, Haitian people, um, who are who are part of these these cyclical waves of of migration. And so um, you know Haitian audiences have really appreciated this. And uh, yeah, I mean I think I think also speaking as as uh, you know a non Haitian non Mexican a U.S. person, I think there's a lot that all the rest of us can learn from from just paying attention, you know, just just being with people in this in this environment. Yeah. What are the, what are the protagonists uh, think about their portrayal? Were they involved in seeing different cuts? Yeah, yeah. that's actually um, so we we really made this movie together, and like the the core team that that was together for the whole project was extremely small. It was myself, um, my friend Rachel Kantav, who is a Haitian American anthropologist, actually. She had never never worked on a film before. Um, my partner Nora Mendes and our our colleague Abram Avila, who is a, a Mexican um, film producer based in Tijuana. And so the four of us kind of got together because we knew that our team needed to re need to reflect sort of like all these different sides of this this like unique uh, cultural picture. And um, and then we needed voices, we needed uh, heroes, we needed protagonists who, you know, wanted to make a movie. It was, this wasn't like, we didn't pitch this to them, like let us, hey, let us follow you around with the camera for a while and like see uh, what your life is like. It was, it was we, had, we had a lot of discussions with them before we started rolling the camera about like, um, do you have something to say? Do you like? Do you have a a story that you want to tell? And then once we got into it, um, we would sort of decide. We would construct scenes in a way before we filmed them. We would sort of 
talk about what was going on on a particular day or you know how how they were feeling at a particular time and then like try to figure out how to capture it and so we we be like okay let's maybe we should we should just hang out and you guys can you know walk around downtown um and talk about what like your ideas for the future that's you know that's one scene that i think actually works really nicely in the beginning of the film and that was very much a, like a co-created moment it was it was um as much uh robin's and james's idea and direction as it was mine and i and that was what we were um aiming for i think throughout the process yeah sounds like an incredible uh, picture and I'm wishing you all the all the best with with it and its release um you also have quite an extensive background as a cinematographer camera operator um talk to me about a beautiful day in the neighborhood and um how you got involved with that project quite an iconic work um <laughs> walk us through that yeah that was i mean that movie was a lot of fun and and um i i came on because um the director of photography jody lee Leipz, is a a very old friend and um long-term collaborator of mine and so i i you know trust him to to um choose good projects and to to stay around good people and the director mary Al heller is really just a sort of incredible um leader and visionary and uh but the, yeah i mean the, the film is great uh you know tom hanks is a is a real um gem obviously and he's just like a real uh pleasure to to be around and to work with and to listen to um and you know for me the most the most exciting part of that project was getting to shoot to sort of reshoot these iconic scenes um from the original television series using the exact same uh equipment these these ancient uh tube video cameras from the 1970s and 80s um that uh you know were let us get these images as close as possible to the way they were actually um, seen back in the day. And so that, that was just like an added wrinkle to the, to the, to the project that, that um, made it really interesting uh, for me and for the rest of the, the camera team. Because we, we really had to like learn these machines all over again, because no, I mean, no one uses them anymore. And we had to, mm -hmm. we had to invent a way to, to get the picture out of those cameras and, and, you know, transfer it to, the the highest quality um digital media live and so it was just it was a real uh puzzle at first but um i'm very i'm pretty pleased with, with the way it came out and how it looks yeah there, there's a certain warmth to the to the look i'm surprised that wasn't just all done in the post-production process of, <laughs> yeah you know i i know i mean that that was actually like a you know a, a major uh point of contention in pre-production on that film was whether you you could get the same picture quality out of um, you know just like treating footage that you shoot with a with a contemporary camera, and we did all kinds of tests, and honestly, nothing that the the post guys were able to cook up compared to like the all of the the little details of the of the quality of these old these old cameras it was just like there was something baked in essentially to those images that that just felt different and i think that's something that um both me and jody that the the dp that i just mentioned uh that's like a way that we that we work is it's like a lot about feeling you know and it's like about the immediate reaction that you have when you when you see a picture and it was just it was there was something special about using those old those old machines. Yeah. And what is it like working with Tom Hanks? <laughs> um he's I mean, he's really as nice as everybody says he is. I wish I had something like more um exciting or revealing to say. Oh, <laughs> but he's good. yeah, he's a he's a super nice guy and and something cool about him is that he never leaves set. Like once he arrives at the beginning of the day. So like while while the crew is working and you know changing things around between shots, he'll just be you know off to one side sitting in a in a canvas chair reading a book. Huh. He's, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't like disappear to his trailer the way you know it's conventional for most um, actors to do. He's he's just around. 
which I appreciate it. Yeah. Present. It's present. Um, very good. Well, I, I'm very excited to have you here. Let's put your website up on the screen. I want to make sure people can learn about your project. There it is, samellisonfilm.com. You can see, also look him up on IMDb and learn about his new documentary, which is coming out soon. Um, thanks so much for being on the show. Really a pleasure having you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kabir. It's, it's, really, it's been a good convo. You got it. All right, so that's our show. If you want to learn who will be on the broadcast, you can subscribe to our social media and make sure to uh, stay safe, stop out there, take care of the art, it will take care of you. Bye, everyone.